All right. Hi, everyone. It's Kayvon with Ascari Art. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm about to start this ugly painting. <laughs> well, pretty painting, pretty painting with ugly color combination. So out of all the votes from the three different polls, uh, same polls, um, I ended up uh, adding all the totals, and this is the option that actually won. You've got Moss, Fiesta, Salmon, Slate, and Butterscotch. And this is going to be a major challenge. Um, so now the idea of this painting is to see if I can challenge myself and paint something pretty with an unsuspecting uh, color combination that I'm not used to. I mean, these colors are very conflicting. Um, and the idea is not to use the same amount of color um, for each color, but to mix it up and decide which one I want to be primary as the most the amount the most amount of color and then work my way and balance it with the other colors with the other two or three so that's the idea um, safety first obviously I always recommend a respirator when using denatured alcohol there's a video in my videos um, that you can look at watch when you're doing alcohol inks and or you're using resin um, either to seal or to actually paint with resin so Again, this is denatured alcohol. I've got a little bit of, uh, this is 99% uh, isopropyl that I have left over um, that I you know, want to use and mix with the denatured. But since I am using denatured, the fumes are strong. I've got ventilation above me and I've got ventilation, um, the windows open. So, you know, even though I've got ventilation, I'm right above my fumes. So I want to make sure that I always wear my respirator. You'll still be able to hear me through the mask because I've got this microphone and you should be able to hear me pretty clearly. If you've got any issues with audio, please, please uh, make a mention on the comments and I'll look over on the live chat every once in a while to see if there's anything that uh, needs to be corrected. So let's get started. Um, so as I'm looking at these swatches that I've made, um, again, these swatches can be downloaded. I've got all these, all the swatches of the alcohol inks that I've purchased. Um, they're actually on my website, ascariart.com slash blog, and you can check it out there. It's there. Um, okay. So now I'm looking at all these colors and I got to decide, um, these are the winners. This is the option that won. So I need to decide which one I want to use as my primary. Um, and that's going to be hard. Um, so if I, if I was to categorize these colors, I'm going to put the grays together. You've got a little blue here and I'm going to use the salmon and the butterscotch. I guess I could see it like this. Yeah, I'll probably do that. So primary, I'm going to mix these two together and I'm going to bring these two and then I'm going to add this as an accent. So that's the idea. That's what I'm seeing. And I just found out about the results literally 10 minutes ago. So I'm working this through my head as I'm going, so wish me luck. This is so nerve-wracking. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> so I'm going to set these up right here on the outskirts of my canvas so I can kind of look at them as I paint. I'm going to put my mask on. Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, I don't think there's going to be that big of an audio issue because the mic is pretty close to my head. Um, but if you do have any issues, please again comment and let me know and I will be sure to fix it. Okay, here we go. So first thing I like to do is I'm going to mix, I'm going to drop some of this alcohol ink, the denatured, sorry, denatured alcohol. Um, before I do that, I want to give I want to give some uh, props to a few people here. Uh, first thing, I want to thank my wife. She's taking care of the kids while I'm doing this. Um, it's kind of unfair, but I, I do want to thank her. Um, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to put a link to a studio that teaches resin painting, watercolor, all sorts of mediums. They're located in South Lake, I believe. I will post the link. They're in dire need because of the COVID. They're not able to um, 
They may not be able to pay rent because they can't provide classes to um, just people, kids, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to post the GoFundMe link to help them. They're trying to raise about 4K. Um, and they may not be able to keep their doors open. And so I wanted to just like throw that out there. I'm going to put the link for the GoFundMe. Um, and any amount of donation could help them to keep their doors open because over this whole pandemic. And they've got, I believe, about two grand uh, worth of donations and need two more. So any help would, would be able to help them out. Um, so I wanted to just kind of throw that out there. I know the couple that owns it and they're lovely people. They're wonderful people. Um, almost like they're really good friends and almost mentor. So please, if you can just check out the link on the bottom of my, uh, video after I post this and see if you could help them. If not, it's okay. I understand there's a lot of trouble going through right now through the economy. So no worries, but any help could help. Um, all right. So the other thing I was going to say is this is a canvas that I've already created that I've made um, one inch borders sides. Um, I've also got um, this was an old painting. I did two coats of Jess, uh, not gesso, sorry, kills two. And I also did uh, some sanding, wet sanding, meaning water with high grit sandpaper, just kind of go through it. And then I went in and put another coat down and did the same thing, let it dry, sanded it again, and I was good. Typically, I do five coats, three to five coats, but since this painting, um, you know, I don't know how this is going to turn out, so I wasn't really, uh, you know, I'm excited about it, but I'm kind of not sure if this is going to come out pretty, so I didn't spend a lot of time prepping this canvas, um, but it's okay. The other thing I want to make sure you know is you want to make sure that this is leveled, right? So you want to make sure that your canvas is leveled. Um, and typically you put a level on it and just to make sure we do that with resin painting. But it's important to do it with alcohol painting as well because you, you'll start seeing things move to one side over the other. And if you're trying to move it around with a blow dryer, that's kind of frustrating. So again, just make sure you do that. Um, you level. And all right, so what I like to do is I like to pretty much start from one end and go to the other end. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to drop some alcohol down uh, over here. Okay. And I'm going to drop, I'm going to do Fiesta first. Um, what I'm going to do first, actually, no, I'm going to use Moss. Couple drops of moss and a couple drops of slate. There we go. And let's move it around. So this is a base coat. So I'm not ex expecting anything crazy out of this. I'm just trying to see. Alcohol is drying pretty quickly. Let's do it again. We're going to have to do more drops because this canvas is, uh, should have been prepped better, but it's okay. I'm also going to add a couple of drops of this butterscotch because I feel like these three could, could play really well, but I don't know. We're, we're experimenting as we go. And I'm also going to add more alcohol, denatured alcohol on this one. Okay, let's see now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of uh, regular alcohol here. And 
there are some up here. Okay, we're gonna drop, I want this to be the primary, so I'll drop that in. And since I have sandal here, I'm uh, sorry, salmon, drop that in. So Fiesta's really bright, as you can see. There's my moss. I'm gonna leave butterscotch for now, and then there's my slate. Okay. Just trying to figure out, I'm trying to work a form right now, uh, building a base, see what I can do, I'm going to push some of this out into the grays, and as you can see, the, the, uh, the sandal's gone, I'm sorry, salmon is gone, I keep calling it sandal. That's a different color. Okay, so based on what I remember from Fiesta, it is a very hot pink. So right now I'm just, again, I'm just moving it around, making sure I kind of know where my form's going to be. I'm looking to see where my form's going to be, pushing this out. And as you know from some of my paintings from before, I don't like the hard edges. I like to soften them up. And what I mean by hard edges, I'm talking about these edges. Okay. So I'm seeing something. I'm seeing I like the moss and slates here. And I like the pink on the middle. So I'm going to do some slate on this side. And moss on this side. And push it through. Yeah, everyone, this is a really tough challenge. Like, I'm looking at these colors and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I, what have I gotten myself into? This is crazy. Um, let me do this really quick. I need to pour a little bit more alcohol in so I have it ready. And then, let's do this. I am not feeling too confident about this one for sure. But that's the, that's the point. I mean, I guess the bigger point that I'm trying to make with art is you have to challenge yourself. I mean, you have to. You have to risk. You have to take risks. Um, just like life in, in general. Um, you have to take risks. You have to try different things. Um, you know, um, that's what you have to do. So... So now what I'm doing is I'm pushing some of that slate back in and the moss just to kind of see again this is just the base uh, just to try to figure out what this is going to evolve to this may completely change as I go 
Um, typically, these projects take about, I don't know, it could take two hours if I do it nonstop, up to five or six, maybe even more depending on layers. But for this live presentation, we'll see. See how much energy I got left. My son just walked in. Uh, he needs to get out of here because I don't want the fumes. Cameron, go in, go outside. Close the door, okay? Yeah, go close the door. We don't want you to get sick. Go, go close the door. Sorry about that. Okay. a little bit of this uh, I'm liking this salmon color it's adding a little bit of depth and dimension so now it's time to move it again so we're going to go from the corners now So as you can see, this isn't enough pigment for this amount of surface area. I know some of you may be doing like smaller cards, um, yellow paper, um, smaller surfaces or substrates. And for larger pieces like this, you're going to need a lot of ink. And as you can see, I mean, it's spreading out, but it's not, you know, it's going to take layer after layer after layer to get something that you really like. So I'm going to... See how I'm working different areas of the canvas as I'm going. I'm not focusing on one side or one corner. I'm literally trying to focus on multiple as I'm composing this piece. Because I'm looking at composition. I'm looking at uh, um, just composition of color and trying to figure out what, what I can do to make this even better. Some beautiful colors coming out of this. Some purple, some very violet, violet colors. Um, the color violet, sorry. Out of the moss and the Fiesta combined. Again, the Fiesta is one of the 2020 brand new Tim Holtz colors. Um, the other color that's brand new is moss, and I think uh, slate. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not expecting some of the stuff that's happening with this. I'm seeing a lot of brown now out of this. We're going to create a clash, as they call it, right in the middle. And you notice I haven't added any butterscotch because that is supposed to be, as of right now in my mindset, I'm looking at that as the as the accent. Some of you may be thinking, well, you haven't added a lot of the gray yet. I'm like, yeah, I know. I haven't yet. I'm still looking. I've added quite a bit, um, but it's just not seeping through like I want it to. So we're going to add some right there. This is going to take a lot of layering, only because it's just the canvas. Okay. I really like
liking this area. This area right here. Um, I am liking this too. So now that I'm looking at the composition, now that I'm looking at it, I like these great these this moss coming in from the sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring this in, this moss in, and have it creep into this pink and fiesta. And then I'm gonna have some of this butterscotch color come through as accents. And you'll see what I mean by accents. I'm gonna run my brush. I've got a couple brushes here. I've got two brushes here that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go in and, and draw the lines of the butterscotch. So, and then the slate. I'm gonna add the slate with the, with the moss because those two colors really work well together. So, bear with me here. I'm getting, uh, I'm inspired now. I'm seeing things that I like. And I'm not, I don't care about the squirt. Like, you, you notice how I sprayed it on there? It doesn't matter because we're going to be moving it around. So, it's going to change. And that's the whole point. So let's move the slate again. I'm gonna add some slate. I'm gonna add it right here. I think that could work really nicely. Mixing with that pink. The issue with the slate is leaving a blue residue, as you can see, which is okay. I'm not, I don't mind it. I'm getting, I'm getting excited about this one. Some of you may be thinking, well, why aren't you stopping now? Like, this is cool. Why don't you just leave it here? Well, I don't think I'm done. Like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, eh, I'm not done yet. I, I got to work more into it. Make sure I play with the moss a bit more. Uh-oh. I'm just going to literally let that dry. There's my moss. Okay. Let that dry. I'm going to come in here and move these around. So I'm noticing something interesting. The slate is actually leaving some residue. So I'm not liking that. I think it's from the alcohol, the, the denatured. It could be, or, or it could be just the, the way that the, pixel, the pigment is. So I haven't forgotten about the middle here. Let's, let's push some of that in. I'm using denatured mostly. Mixing the colors together. And start concentrating some of the pinks in again.
Okay, go, go, go. Go, go. That was my son again. He's super excited because he got gummy. You fell? Okay, well, can you close the door? Thank you. I guess my kids are keeping my wife busy right now. So I'm using this explosive center. I want this center to be just like explosive with the pinks and the red and the orange, this pinkish red orange that's happening. Also don't want to forget about that. I don't want to forget about the green. Because I want to push the moss in it. I want to push some of that into the moss. This stuff's drying really fast. Um, some of the pigment is pushing through. And luckily I have gloves for this. So what I'm doing is I'm actually working the pigment back down because it's clumping up in certain areas and I'm not liking that. Don't be afraid to use your hands if you're wearing gloves. working through this as I'm going so uh, a little bit more of the ISO with the denature I need to accent this out fingers just to kind of push the sink and soften it as I go. <coughs> okay. I'm just right now I'm just moving the existing pigment that's on there. I haven't added anything yet. So as you can see, as the colors are mixing, some beautiful stuff's happening. The moss is turning into this purple, this dark purple. And 
something I would have never expected. Never. Um, trying to soften this edge a bit. Push this purple out with the moss. Work this area in a bit. Look at that. Oh, this is so pretty. This area, I'm really liking. I'm going to work it through to see if I can get some magic on this side. Combine these two sides, mix them. So I can get the same kind of effect as I go through this. I'm noticing that this area needs a little bit more of the where is it? A little bit of this. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, moss. Let's take a slate. Sorry, not moss. That's what's giving me the purple. And I'm learning as I go with this. And I don't like this area, so I'm going to push this in a bit. I haven't forgotten about this area. I'm going to push this a bit. Oops, didn't mean that. So I've been spreading this out, like from the middle out, now I'm going to bring it in. So I'm going to push it from the outside in. That's how we're going to get some varied layers here. I only use moss. So you may be thinking, Kayvon, like, you should be done by now, right? Well, some may think, yeah, this, is, this could be considered done. Some people would stop here. And that's a preference, right? Like, I, I like to add a little bit more detail to my stuff. I like to add a little bit more. Um, I love white space, so don't get me wrong. Um, so I will leave the white. But I want to I add a little bit more layering like some of the stuff that's happening here like there's there's layers underneath that i like you see this blue stuff coming from the moss that's what i like that's what makes the painting interesting so now i'm going to bring this back in see how i'm bringing 
and pushing some colors out and bringing it back in. I'm going to fade it down a bit, leave some of the lines in the middle, leave that, let it dry, come back here, I'm going to add a little bit more moss. Compositionally, I'm thinking, I'm looking through and thinking through it. You know, I don't want to miss. Oops, my hand had some pink on it, which is okay. I'll come back and add the gray to it. Okay, let's get some more denatured alcohol. So this is going to be a little bit more. because it's evaporating as well so add a little bit more of that I saw I've used probably a little bit half of a cup of ISO of these little cups uh, For this large of a painting, half a cup of ISO is not a lot. It's mostly been two cups of uh, denatured. I have about a cup of this uh, ISO. So as I'm pushing this through, Just working with it. Make sure your blow dryer is not on hot unless you want it to set very soon. Still don't like some of this happening. Instead of drops, I'm adding just lines of, and then pushing it through. Working this out, I don't know what that is, it's the residue from the from the slate. This top out.
And I'm going in with the pinks with the Fiesta. I want the explosive center, so. Where's my salmon? And now I'm gonna bring in the butterscotch. And kind of push this through and around. That butterscotch is pretty strong. The color is really strong. It's, uh, pink is kind of staying in there in the wrong way. Hey Julie, yeah, I think it is slowly but surely. Um, it's just I'm I'm continuously working on it. <laughs> so keep adding to it as I go. As you can see, I may have too much alcohol on here right now, but that's okay. Just moving it around, adding the areas that I like, adding some dark areas and light areas. What I'm thinking through right now is like I'm trying to get a, a consistent feel of line. You see how these lines are forming? Because the pigment's collecting in certain areas. And that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get. You see this line? This right here? And I continuously keep pushing it to that side.
I'm using my finger here because I'm seeing a lot of this like issue with the pigment because the denature is breaking it up so much. Okay. Not liking this butterscotch. This butterscotch is a lot of pigment. Um, I think it's the butterscotch that's doing this, but we'll see. So I don't know if you could hear me as I'm working through this uh, with the blow dryer on. Um, I'm going to share some of my thoughts as I'm going through this. So I'm liking the, the pinks, but you see, I think I need to push some of that pink through a little bit, and I'll be able to do that with the brush. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that without the brush. Uh... I'll try. I want to soften it down a bit. So I like that amount of pink there.
I'm just kind of trying to push that paint over. I'm just kind of pushing the pink through, trying to move it through, and fade it down to this purple. I'm working it through without losing the moss, which I want. Don't want to push the moss. I don't want to lose the moss, so I gotta naturally add more to it. But also don't want it to look muddy, so that's why I'm continuously pushing the paint pigment around so it doesn't so it's malt meshed, but it's not completely uh, muddied up. I'm not saying much right now because I'm just in a zone, I guess. I'm sure you all have been there before.
letting some of it dry. As I'm going through this. I'm adding a little areas of gray in here, I'm softening the edges as I go through this again. Dropper's not putting enough down fast enough. Now here we go, we're going to bring in the moss, I like that area, I do like that area as well. Uh-oh. Say uh-oh because I don't like these little fingers because my blow dryer is too strong and the alcohol is drying fast faster than I could than I can move it. Not a problem. happening to this thing. I'm not sure why. I think it's the denature. It's still 
doing some funky stuff. Okay, so as I'm looking through this, or at this, I'm liking certain areas and I'm not liking others. So I'm going to move the areas I don't like. And try to keep the areas I do like. That's the challenge. Adding moss. See, and it's turning pur purple, obviously, because it's with the pink. And I'm liking that. I don't like the fact that it's doing. Sit and add a little bit more denatured. I'm almost out of denatured. <coughs> Adding the butterscotch. Can't forget about the butterscotch. I've added it earlier on, but Now I'm starting to layer as I'm going. Here I'm layering in, bringing it in from the outside in. See, I'm pushing it back in. Now it's going to be some heavy pigment areas here, but I'm pushing it in, bringing it back out, pushing it in, bringing it back out to give me the layers that I need. I hope you find this entertaining or informative, <laughs> or both. Trying to find some defined lines here as I'm doing this. Okay. Now, put some alcohol right here.
I'm just adding it as I go. I want those dark greenish areas on the edges. And then I want some breaks in here. I'm going to add some of the green, the moss, in here, to blend it. As I'm working through this, I'm, I'm looking at both sides. I'm looking at every angle if I can, and I'm working it as I'm going through it. See, and I'm like pushing certain areas, coming back and letting it dry, and then coming back to the certain other areas, and letting that dry. So like this area right here. So what I'm going to do is look for my slate. Start adding some slate in these areas to give me the dimension, the layering that I like.
Okay. So now, I let this dry over here. Now I'm looking at this, and I need to work this area right here. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try this method. So I have pink, pink right there. A little butterscotch right here and right here. And where's my salmon? Some of that in there and there. Also want some slate right here. And then I'm gonna add the alcohol. I'm gonna push it this way. Push it this way. Trying to move this without affecting everything else, and that's sometimes hard. So bear with me here. Adding moss and slate throughout this area. I'm going to start layering here. Uh oh. Just noticed something.
Okay, so I'm looking at this overall. I'm liking some of the shapes. Now I'm softening some of that up because I want this airy feel on the edges, like this, this stuff here. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, How I do that is I put the ink on the outside edge and push it through with high heat or warm. Where is my moss? Here it is. So, I'm not sure yet about this one. What does everyone think? Should I stop or should I just add the little details that I need to and let it go? Curious to know your thoughts, or is this ugly? I should just stop and quit while I'm ahead, <laughs> if I'm ahead. Okay, uh, okay, so now I'll let this dry a bit more. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in with the alcohol and a brush and start adding some detail and some lines that I like that I'm seeing in this piece that will layer it even more. I'm not sure if other artists do this with the alcohol ink, but I do, because uh, I want some control in the output, and in order to get that, you have to use your hand, you have to use a brush, or you just leave it to hats, and 
you know, you just leave it to chance, and that's not what I want to do. So now I'm adding some of this uh, uh, salmon color throughout. And you'll see what I'll do when I come through with it. Okay. And then... Actually, sure. Okay, so now I'm going to let this dry a bit. Uh, I'm out of both types of alcohol. I like that area. Let's see. I don't like this area, though. Do one more change, and then I think I'm done. So I'm gonna add a li little bit more alcohol on this corner because I'm not sure if I like this area. Also, add a little bit more detail. Hopefully you can still see me do this. <laughs> that stuff hasn't cut out yet. I'm adding a bit more detail here. Because I feel like it needs it. A little bit more detail here. Okay. A little bit more detail here. Let's fade some of this detail, actually, because I'm going to go in there with a brush. So these are the finishing touches, so I'm going in there and just giving myself these sharp lines, but then I'm going to go in with a brush, and you'll see in a minute, 
what I'm about to do. Okay. One more thing. I'm not really liking this area, so I'll do the same thing. I'm going to give it Again, same thing over here, just kind of pushing the pigment to the lines that I like. There you go. Okay. I've got a little bit more alcohol here. I do the same thing on this side. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to push this line out and I want to give myself these nice detailed uh, It's very controlled. Try and move the pigment to the edges without it causing fingers, as I like to call it. So I'm just looking at this area and uh, moving around to give myself these nice sharp lines. Okay, so now the alcohol is dry, so what I'm going to end up doing now is the final touches. So this is somewhat done, and it's going to look really different uh, after I'm done with it. So I've got two brushes here. I've got this little brush 
this very thin brush and I've got this a uh, little bit thicker, but they're all pointed. So I'm going to use the little amount. So I'm going to put my inks away because I'm not using my inks anymore. Um, and what I'm going to end up doing is I will pour, I have a little bit of alcohol in this cup right here. So I'll use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip my brush in to the alcohol and go in there and create a little bit more harsh lines in here by running the alcohol through. And you'll see pushing the alcohol through. And then what I do is I use the blow dryer on hot and I just move that, dry it up fast. To give myself a little bit more detail on the lines. So like I like this blue little area here, so I'm going to drag it all the way through. So it's just a little bit more controlled. So let me get some, let me just get a little bit more alcohol in here so I can kind of show you. It's hard to show this on camera, but like if I don't like some of these finger areas, then I can thin them down and just use the blow dryer on hot and dry it out. to give myself a little bit more detail. So this is where the hand, just having control over the outcome. Okay, that's nice. Because you only have a certain amount of control with just the blow dryer or a hand. Um, okay. So instead of the blow dryer, I'm going to use this little guy, the little Giotto that I have. Okay. Now let's add some detail to the pinks. So I'll go in there and I'll just trace the lines that I do and do not like. So like if I don't like this area here with the finger where the ink is uh, Now I'm just adding detail. So I'm going in there and slightly just tweaking it to the to my liking and controlling the edge. I'll see if I can show you this up close. It's hard to show this on camera. So I take the camera off the pedal still to kind of show you. Um, I will take detail of this af after I'm done. I'll take, um, I'll bring the camera in 
and show you some details. All I'm doing is pushing the minute amount of little amounts of alcohol to give me that sharp line. So the area that I need to work is this area. So I'm going to start from this line here and kind of just play with it. And play with this line. So I'm basically trying to connect these areas together with these fine little lines of detail. certain area I don't like and I just connect them so like this area here So this area is my focus, this concentrated area here. Um, I want this to be the most amount of detail throughout. So this is a little bit soft. There's parts that are detailed here, but it's, it's kind of soft all around the edges. And I'm going to work this out area too. But then I want all this detail in the focal, the center. And right now that's what I'm working on. So I'm moving small amounts of ink around. I want like this explosive center. And I don't want it centered per se. I want it kind of off center. So this is the area that I'm focusing on. This is the area that's going to have the most amount of detail. And I'm all I'm doing is just playing with the lines that exist. They're just underneath a bunch of color. Um, so there's a line right here. I'm looking for the lines. I'm looking for the lines that exist already. This is so here. I'm using de, uh, I'm not using denatured. I'm using isopropyl. And all I'm doing 
is using the brush to define my lines. I want the colors to draw you in, but then I want you to look closely. I want you to draw you into a focal point on the piece, and that's just um, composition is everything. I mean, alcohol ink does some beautiful things naturally, but you always, always, always have to think of composition as well. I, I like the fact that alcohol ink has a natural beauty to it when it's put down. It almost reminds me of, I mean, it is like watercolor just just dries faster and I think you you always as an artist you always should think about composition and you should always focus on um, as you're working through this I want you to focus on um, just what what you want what the direction is what do you want the viewer to see what do you want the viewer to experience and that's why I like adding the little fine details. Now, if I wanted to do something soft, I would just, um, like if it was softer base, like it was just a soft piece for a client, then I would I would not do this. But this is for me, and this is for, um, you know, this was an experiment. And someone may like this, and whole host of people may hate it. I mean, that's the nature of art. It's very subjective. So I like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this area here, because I do like this area, but um, I just want to add a little bit more detail going in. The art is nice because it is very uh, fluid and natural and there's things that happen to it as you as you move across and do certain things with the ink but again you have to have an intent and you have to have a a I guess not rules but a set of guidelines and expectations of what you want in your piece and how you want your piece to look. So, as you saw, I did add butterscotch. Butterscotch is in here. Um, I could go in and add a little bit more butterscotch. I added salmon, I added all the colors we chose. However, and you can see so the slate, how the slate's coming through. Um, I may have to change my glove real quick because I'm adding a lot of color that I don't want on the cleanup. Um, so what I like to do on the cleanup side, I'll typically take a napkin and some alcohol and clean up these edges that I'm not really fond of. If I want really clean outside area, then I'll just do that. I'll just bring in clean up the areas that I do not like like this area right here there's like a drop that looks out of place so I'll fade it down fade it out um, up here there's a couple drops you know because again this is this is how I want this piece to look There we go. Okay. So I've got a couple more pe couple more things to add to this detail-wise. Um, I'm, I'm liking it. I just need to extend, like for example, I want to extend this area out into here. So again, I'll, I'll use the same method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to embellish, um, oh, let's see, I'm going to embellish this line.
shadow. this line through So some have asked me, like, how do you, how do you know when it's done? I did a video about this. How do you know when it's done? Again, that is a preference, <laughs> and it is a you gain that experience from just doing it and painting. And sometimes I still don't know when I'm when I'm done. I'm sure some of you are saying you should stop now. Okay. So I think uh, as I'm looking through this, I like a lot of it. Actually, this came out really pretty. But you be the judge. I want you to tell me if you think this looks good. Um, thank you, Mary Carmen. I saw your comment. Uh, I do think it's pretty as well. I really like this one as well. Um, and the, just the amounts of detail of adding, of just adding the detail in. So the focal is around this area. So if I want, I can add a little bit more just dense. Just dense lines. area where it's just um, see I'm bringing in some of the light in with it and what I'm gonna do actually I'm gonna add a little butterscotch and how I'm gonna do that is I'm not gonna just pour it on the canvas I'm going to pour it in a clean cup and add a little bit of, uh, I'm going to add a couple drops in here, as you can see, right here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the alcohol that I have to thin it down. And so now you got this orange. And I'm going to go in there with this orange and just plop it in the areas that I think need it. So, like, things like highlight areas that I like. Bring in some of the orange or butterscotch as we put it. Just a little. I don't want a lot of this, but
So the detail is here. And again, what I'm doing here, I'm just adding a little bit of the butterscotch in there just to kind of give it just a little bit more of that burst, that sunburst, the burst of light coming through. That's the cool thing about alcohol ink over watercolor. You can't do this with watercolor. You can't go back and put a lighter color on a darker color like this. It won't lift it like it does um, alcohol ink. That's the one thing that I enjoy. I've done watercolor. I actually had a really good professor, master watercolorist in art school. His name was Rob Ertle. Um, you can look him up, E-R-D-L-E. -E. The guy was a master watercolorist. That was probably one of his last classes. Um, actually, my best friend, um, Chris uh, uh, Henley, was actually one of his last class classes um, before he passed away of, I think it was pancreatic cancer. He had a virus that caused him to pass away. But um, the guy was just amazing um, so homage to him but I just wanted to say like I, I enjoy watercolor but the the effect that you can get with uh, with alcohol ink over watercolor is uh, amazing so now I'm adding So, I think that's it. I, I'll, I'll add a little bit more detail to this as I go. I think uh, I, I will show you in a minute. Let me get the camera down and I'll show you what I mean. I'm just trying to give it a little bit more direction so it doesn't look... Uh,
um, again, I'm just adding a bit more detail in this area. Okay, do one more thing, uh, I have not finished this yet, <laughs> I keep saying okay, and then I notice something that I don't like, so I go in there and rework it. So I like to step away as well from it, oh, I just noticed something else, oh goodness, um, this area here, this must have happened just recently. softening some of those areas and adding a bit more detail in others. I think we are done here, and I will pretty much uh, need to just clean this little area up. I dropped some ink on. There we go. I think that is it 
thank you everyone for watching. Um, let me, actually, before I say that, hold on a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a close-up so you can see the amount of detail that I'm referring to here. Uh, let's see here. All right, so as you can see, this is the base, the start of it. We started around here, and you see the amount of detail where um, as, I, as I move out, here's the piece. And then let's zoom in, and you can see the detail areas that I'm referring to. This area here, and then you got some really beautiful spots in here. So this is the actual piece hope you enjoy it and oh and this area here the soft I love that it's it's actually the the butterscotch coming through that's why it looks brown with the moss the moss uh, caused it to do that so this is the piece thank you everyone again I appreciate it thank you for watching thank you for being a part of this and I will have this on uh, YouTube once it's done um, stay tuned we're gonna do another painting uh, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.